Hey everyone, I'm back at school. That's why there's this loud ass annoying AC in the room. And it makes podcasting hard. But, whew, other than that, uh, yay! This show is finally on Netflix! I've been waiting a long time for this. So, quick story, um, growing up as a youth, all the other kids would really enjoy Harry Potter when we got to the point of reading chapter books. And, you know, I, I read a little faster, but I couldn't really find anything particular until I found this book called The Reptile Room, which, when I was a lot younger, my, my whole thing was I wanted to be a herpetologist. So I'm like, I wonder what this is about, and I kept reading it. So um, I found out that The Reptile Room was the second book in a children's book series called The Series of Unfortunate Events by Lemmy Snicket. I read the majority of them. I think I skipped four of them. And I read them at like random in- intermittent times. I think I read it like two, four, six, one, three, like seven, eight, skip, 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 like 11, 12, 13, or something like that. Um, and it jumped around. So when I heard that this show was getting a series on Netflix, especially after the movie and Nickelodeon, which I still have a soft spot for, I actually don't think it's that bad. And I wanted to see more of these characters. I finally get to see the first four books, like done, like a series and um what i love is that they're taking their time with this every episode is like around an hour long and uh it's the first season is done but they're going to do the second season which is books uh five through nine and then the third season will be uh 10 through 13. so what did i think about this i really really liked it uh maybe some of it is banking off of my own personal nostalgia and kind of excitement for the series, but I think the cast is really solid. You know, Neil Patrick Harris's Count Olaf, I mean, coming off of... A lot of this is also going to be comparing the 2004 movie to this one, because I still remember that one pretty well. And um, the only problem is that since I haven't read the books in so long, since the series ended, I uh, my memory of some of the events between the books and the show... Is a little bit foggy, but I, I know there's a lot of things where they took liberties, which is fine. Um, so let, let's get through it. Uh, the cast, we have Neil Patrick Harris as Count Olaf, who I thought did an excellent job, especially after, I thought Jim Carrey was great. Um, the tone of the show is definitely a lot more morose. Uh, there are a couple weird implications that, like, Count Olaf was a little bit more of a pedophile, <laughs> kind of. So um, he's also one of the, like, producers for the show, and they added a few more musical aspects to it, which I think was good. Uh, Patrick Warburton, as Lemony Snicket, I thought was interesting. Because he has a very distinct voice. If you've ever heard him talk on Family Guy or just anything he's been in. Um, I actually could tell he was like pulling it back from Because his voice dips really deep when he speaks. So he was pulling it back to make it sound a little bit more legal, I suppose. But I don't know. Um, Melina Weissman as Violet Baudelaire, who I forgot entirely. This is the girl that played young Cara zor on Supergirl, and when I caught that, I'm like, oh, that's why you look familiar. <laughs> Seen you before. Uh, Lewis Hines is Klaus, who I don't know. K. Todd Friedman is Mr. Poe, who was also good. Presley Smith is Sonny. And then we have the uh, secondary characters. You know, I have Joan Cusack as Justice Strauss, who is, who is good. Asif Monvi as Uncle Monty, which I thought was great. Catherine O'Hara. Uh, is Georgina Orwell. I was wondering why she looked familiar. Don Johnson is Sir. Alfie Woodard is Aunt Josephine. And you have the rest and the rest and the rest of the cast. Uh, I'm going to try not to actually spoil this because there's something revealed near the end of the season. And I felt like an idiot to think that... I think Lemmy Snicket, or Daniel Handler, the actual guy, was uh, one of the script writers on this show, which I think is good. And they actually kind of pull you along with some implications for certain characters that you think might be coming back, but it winds up turning around, and then by the end of the season, it all, like, comes together, which I think was really smart. And honestly, I think it was it's easier to pull off with a t- TV show than it is with, like, a book. Um, one of the things that I love about this show, and it's it's... It's something I enjoy from the books, but it's just, like, super explicit just because of the way the show is written based from the books. 
is that it really, and it's probably why I enjoy it so much, is that it flips the kind of perspective where the three children are the mature ones that have to come up with ideas and events to get themselves out of shooting situations. And the adults have a like childlike aspect to them that makes them near like blissfully stupid, but they're the ones in the positions of power. Like, oh, your children, children should be seen and not heard. While the adults all this time are bickering, they're not noticing the obvious, they're ignoring the facts, they're easily tricked and fooled and such and such, and they're easily manipulated in the same way that like a child would be. All the children, on the other hand, are thinking like pragmatically, and they've done all these research and studied and learned and been able to kind of do their own thing. And even Sunny is incredibly smart, despite mostly no one being able to understand her, aside from maybe her siblings and a handful of other people. Um, and it was just good for me personally to just experience these characters again and it really kind of took me back to being a kid uh, adaptation wise I think it was pretty solid it can't get every single detail in there which is fine um, what I thought was interesting was that the cast was extremely diverse which I didn't expect because I'm like Un Uncle Monty is Indian Aunt Josephine is black uh, Sir and I think his name was Charles they, they were partners and not the way that you would think business partners. They were also partner partners, <laughs> which I thought was, uh, it just surprised me. I'm like, wow, oh, okay. Um, there are also, the one of the nice things about the show is that it's kind of like one of the genres listed for the book series other than like dark comedy and gothic is that it also says steampunk, which I think works for the series is that it was always like a series in the modern era but also kind of in its own type of thing like they have the technology of like so like they're aware of it but that's just not what ha it doesn't add anything or detract from the story like these aren't modern kids where it's just like oh it's whip out your cell phone and call for help call the police it's like no they still have like paddy wagons and rotary dial phones and shit like that and the aesthetic of it is like a mishmash because they have like modern technology, like computers and shit like that, but they also use like typewriters and that. So it's like in and out of its own time, which I think is cool. There were a couple jokes and jabs that I thought were very intriguing. Um, like a very blatant fourth wall break. This isn't really a spoiler, because it happens, I think, in the second episode. Or second or third, where Count Olaf is speaking. And he says something to the... Uh, he mentions this, I think, twice in the whole series. Maybe three times. It, it comes up a couple times. He's just like, you yeah, know, I, I prefer a more long-firm streaming service of television where I can just get everything I want at once. And he, like, looks over to the side. Now, where the camera angle is, he's looking directly at the screen. But when he says it, he's, it's, like, at the children. Because that's opposite where he's looking. So it's just like, oh, haha, jokes. I think, but the, the referring to the jab... Um, there is a dismissive comment that he made calling it like a cacophony of Nickelodeon and I'm like did you just <laughs> what did we just really <laughs> I just thought it was really funny that I'm, I'm not sure if they were just doing that for the purpose of you know use busting out the big words or whatever but um because Nickelodeon is an actual term if you don't know but um like Nickelodeon also produced the original movie way back then they were the ones that like released it and everything to the public to mediocre reviews so that might have also been a joke but I think the way it tackles the show it, well the books I mean is good um, despite it being PG there's like a lot of wow moments <laughs> we're just like wow they because you I guess in another series where it'd be like really darker you know there's a character who um, winds up getting like a thing pressed and he basically almost loses his leg uh, um, and they have to like take him to the hospital and it's just like in another show it'd be like all blood bloody and shitty like that but for him he's just like oh okay and his like leg is almost comically flattened like Play-Doh and he does come back so um, like uh, the, the way they handle you know, if you know anything about these seri the series, you know a lot of their uh, caretakers die in pretty shitty ways, you know. Go to the leeches! Or, 
Um, darts to the throat. Like people just dying left and right. I think a character drowns in the second episode. So they also introduced a, a couple more characters. Um, I don't think I remember Jacqueline from the stories, and they had also plant seeds, not only for the, uh, especially for the future. That some of them in the background, and some are like super obvious. Which I think is really cool if you even vaguely remember some of the stuff from the books and some of the characters they have introduced, so I'm really excited to see what season two brings. Um, when it comes to the acting and the child acting and everything, I think it's good for the most part. I think they do have a good dynamic as like a brother and sister. At times it can feel like a tiny bit stale, but you know, I've really got to cut them a break because like, one, they have to carry this, this whole series basically being carried on them. Uh, not just Lemony Snicket and Count Olaf, but um, but on them and their ability to act. And I think for the most part, they pull it off. Sometimes line reads come out a little dry. I think the kid who plays Klaus might be English, and I think his accent slipped a little bit from time to time, but otherwise it was really good. And you can kind of see the dynamic. Uh, the, the baby playing Sunny, she was fine. Um, the next thing I kind of want to address is that this show, you can tell it has a Netflix budget. <laughs> Because um, I wish it was a lot more practical in some regards, but I can see where a lot of that budget went to was to set designs to make the aesthetic of it very much like the books and the designs and everything with the VFD and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, the budget went to the architecture. I can't be mad at that because the set designs for it, I think, are fucking beautiful. Um, but there's some CGI in there, which is you're like, oh, yeah, this is a little cheaper but you know what it, it works to serve the purposes that it does it's not supposed to be like ILM it's supposed to be like listen we need a flying lizard do it or like you know we need a, a baby biting through a peg leg you gotta do it cause I, uh, I don't think a like one two year old actual baby can do that or when they had Sonny up in the cage like you can't really tie up a baby just child labor laws and stuff like that you mm, no that's just weird and ever throw the cards and do tricks and get up and stand and fly and everything like that so you know uh, I'm, I'm cutting a lot of stuff for benefit of the doubt but you know I like that I like that the show is like produced and kind of run by one Barry Sonnenfeld whose works I love because I love him for Men in Black and you know you can certainly tell in some way the shots are set up in some of the direction and even some of the comedy um there was Barry Sonnefeld, but you can also see like the way that Daniel Handler put his prints in for the writing. You can see where uh, where Neil Patrick Harris put his fingerprints in, just kind of for the musical stuff, because it actually has a theme song, which I thought was interesting. <laughs> so I, I thought that was cool. Um, but yeah, I I enjoyed the show. I highly recommend it, especially if you're a fan of the series. It it won't cover everything. Um, it's not, you know, it's not going to be flawless because they only have so much they can work with. But given that they cover a whole book in about two hours, they're and just cutting it up in halves, and they're really kind of Harry Pottering it for the whole series, and they're doing all thirteen, which means it'll be done by twenty nineteen. I want to say, um, I'm excited. I want to see more of this. Uh, I think that over time, you know, the actors will be able to settle a little bit more in their roles. Um, I think they did a really good job, especially with people playing their, their caretakers. I really loved, uh, I think, of the whole book series, the second one, maybe it's because it was the first one I read, but the Reptile Room just seems the most optimistic and like the best experience they had, because after that it just goes downhill from there with their caretakers, especially with Count Olaf chasing them the whole time. But Asif Mon be like, he trusted the kids, he respected the kids, he acknowledged them. He, he was wrong in, in some areas, he, he thought... Uh, uh, not Gustav, that was his actual assistant. Stefano. He didn't realize that Stefano was Count Olaf and didn't really get to catch it in time before, you know, what happened, what happened. But I think, you know, in the original, he was really good. I think the same thing happened here. Um, having Joan Cusack be a follow-up to Justice Strauss, I think, also worked really well. Having Alfred Woodard follow-up to Meryl Streep <laughs> as Aunt Josephine. I think there's a lot of aspects from the original movie that they captured in the original movie and I think they captured that here too and we got to see more of that which makes it even better because you can get more kind of invested in the character from the writing um sir we never got to see him adapted but I think he performed well for what he did 
definitely kind of a dick hole. <laughs> um, I, I didn't like the pose. Uh, I don't think that was the issue I had in the original, where it seemed like he was more, and I guess because they're doing it, it's a longer form of telling a story, and so you have more time to develop uh, Mr. Poe as a character, and you actually get to see his family more. <laughs> Eleanor seems like a bitch. And I don't really like her because she just kind of is like, oh, this is a terrible situation. Let me exploit this for money, which there's a, there's a couple things in this series that kind of make you wonder um, if they're supposed to be flash like analogs for things that go on in the real world. And I think it, it works well. Um, but Mr. Poe himself, like, God, irritated the fuck out of me. But for that's what his character was written to do, kind of, is to be like, oh, don't be preposterous. Oh, that's just silly. The children are just being children. And, like, not listening to the obvious clues right in front of them. And, you know, because there's, like, that saying from the mouths of babes, you know, there's, like, comes wisdom. You know, the children aren't dumb. And even uh, Uncle Monty's, like, the only one who actually kind of listens to them. Everyone's like, oh, no, they're, they're kids. They don't know what they're talking about. But all the other adults in the VFD are like, no, yeah, they do, but we have to, like, reach them and stuff like that. But, you know. Um, but, yeah. I think it was good. I can't wait till season two comes out over time. I think the acting's going to get better. I think the writing's going to get, you know, stay consistent, if not get better, because, you know, they they have this. I think it's going to be good. And uh, I can't wait to see more from these actors and these characters. And, yeah, go out, check it out. It's only eight hours long. <laughs> Shorter than your Marvel Netflix shows. But, yeah, I highly recommend it. Give it a watch. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to my channel. Uh, anyways, I will see you guys later.